Hello and welcome to A Worm. Today we'll be taking a look at the chicken wing. The chicken wing, besides being delicious when cooked, is also a great way to learn about a lot of different types of tissues. Now, the tools we'll be using today is a dissection tray right here, but if you don't have one, you can just use a plate. More tools, scissors, and also forceps, which are not completely necessary, so if you don't have it, it's fine. A probe, but I'm just going to be using it to point at things, so it's fine if you don't have it. And a scalpel or small knife can be helpful, but scissors might be safer if you prefer that. Make sure to wear gloves and wash your hands and surroundings thoroughly afterwards, because raw chicken can contain dangerous bacteria. Alright, so if you can get just the chicken wing from the grocery store, that's great. But if you can only find a whole chicken like this, I'll show you how to remove just the wing. So run a knife, this can be a scalpel or just a kitchen knife, along this shoulder joint and cut around to remove the whole wing. So now you've removed the chicken wing. Now let's take a look at the external anatomy. The chicken wing is divided into three rough sections. The section closest to the body, from the shoulder joint to the first joint, is called the upper wing. This middle segment, from the first joint to the second joint, is called the lower wing, and this last segment is called the wing tip. This little structure that's jutting out is called the allula, or the thumb. So now let's take a look at the skin. So if I zoom in, you can see chicken skin has these tiny little pores or holes all over it. So these holes would be the areas where feathers attach, since the chicken wing would normally be covered with feathers. Now let's take a look at the internal anatomy. So first, if you peel back the skin a little bit, this works easiest near the shoulder joint you can see that there is this yellow spongy tissue right underneath the skin. And this is fatty tissue. If you feel it, it feels kind of greasy or oily. So fat is stored in many places in the chicken's body, but most of it is stored right under the skin like it is here. This kind of fat is called subcutaneous fat. Subcutaneous fat has many functions. The most obvious one is storage of energy in the form of fat, but it also functions as insulation to help regulate body temperature and as padding to help protect muscles and bones from injury. Now, you can also see that the skin is connected to the muscle by these silvery fibers, and this is connective tissue that connects skin to muscle. We are going to have to cut through this as you remove the skin from the chicken wing. We are going to be removing the skin from the upper wing and the lower wing. It's best to start at this flap of skin right here because you have a little more room to work with. Just lift up the skin with forceps and cut through the connective tissue carefully with a scalpel or scissors. Be careful when cutting to avoid cutting into the muscle below the skin. A good way to do this is to angle your scissors or scalpel a little up as you cut. You can also sometimes use your hands to peel some skin away when needed.
So now let's look at the muscles. The muscles are these pink tissues, and we'll be looking at the muscles in the lower wing here, since that's easiest to see. So muscles are made up of fibers that are arranged in bundles. If you look very closely, you might be able to see the bundles of fibers along the muscle. It's kind of like the grain of the muscle. And when these muscle fibers contract, like this, they produce motion in the wing. I'll show this a bit better later. You can also see that the muscle is connected to bone at each end. It's connected to bone here, it stretches across the bone, and it's connected to bone again here. This is important because if the muscles aren't connected to bone, it won't be able to pull on anything when it contracts. Movement is a result of the bone moving when a muscle pulls on it. So here you can see that when I pull on this muscle, the wing moves. Now this muscle is called a flexor muscle because when it contracts, the angle between the upper wing and the lower wing decreases, as you can see here. Now the muscle on the other side right here produces the opposite motion. When this muscle contracts, the wing moves the other way. This muscle would be called an extensor muscle because it increases the angle between the upper wing and the lower wing. Muscles usually exist in pairs, a flexor and an extensor. So now let's take a look at tendons. Tendons connect muscle to bone. So you can see them at each end of the muscle, like right here. Tendons are bands of shiny white connective tissues that are very strong and inelastic. As I pull on it, you can see how strong it is. I actually have a cut tendon right here. And if I pull on it, you can see that it doesn't stretch much because it's not very elastic. Now, tendons obviously need to be strong because you don't want it to snap while your muscles are pulling on the bone. They also need to be inelastic because it transfers energy from the muscle to the bone and you don't want a loss of energy. For example, if I move the muscle, and instead of the muscle moving the bone here, if the tendon just stretched really far, that would be bad because it would be a waste of energy. Okay, so now let's look at blood vessels. Blood vessels look like thin, red tubes and can usually be found between muscles. The blood vessels you'll be able to see will either be veins or arteries. Capillaries are too small to see with the naked eye. Blood vessels provide oxygen and nutrients to the muscles so that they can do work. Obviously, all the tissues of the chicken wing need a blood supply, but muscles are a very hard-working tissue so they do need more oxygen than other tissues. So you can see that there's blood in the blood vessel, and if I push on it, I can actually move the blood through the blood vessel. Okay, and running right next to the blood vessel is a nerve. It's a bit hard to see, it's this white, very thin, thread-like structure. Nerves send information between the brain and the muscle. So if the chicken wants to move its wing, its brain will send an electrical impulse through this nerve, which will then transmit that information and tell the muscle to contract. Now I'm going to remove some of the muscles to get a closer look at the bones. I'll just cut through a tendon at one end and peel away the muscle. So now we can see all of the bones. 
the bones of the chicken wing are actually homologous with the human arm, which means the bone structure of the chicken wing is very similar to human anatomy. So this bone right here is the humerus bone, which is the same bone you have in your upper arm. So the two bones here in the lower wing is called the radius and the ulna. You have the same bones in your forearm. Now, the wingtip is kind of different. You can't see the bones here, but they're kind of fused together. So us humans can move each of our fingers, but in chickens, a lot of the metacarpals and phalanges are fused together, and so it forms a single appendage. Now, the bones are connected to each other by ligaments. Ligaments are similar to tendons because it's also a strong band of connective tissue. But instead, it connects bone to bone, not bone to muscle. You can see a ligament right here, connecting the humerus bone to the ulna. Without ligaments holding them together, your bones would fall out of place and move apart. So you can also see ligaments here. So this is a ligament, although it's been cut when the bone was also cut. This is another ligament, which has also been cut right here. And you can see that the ligaments attach directly to bone here. Okay, so ligaments are made of very strong connective tissue, just like tendons. However, at the same time, Ligaments still need to allow the bones at the joint to move freely and quickly. So ligaments are a bit more elastic than tendons, as you can see, so that it can stretch while the bone moves. So when the bone is moving like this, the ligament does have to stretch a little bit. But even if the bones could move freely, it would be very bad if they kept grinding against each other because the friction would cause a lot of damage. This is why the bones are covered by cartilage at the ends. As you can see here, cartilage is a smooth, slippery white connective tissue that caps the end of bones and cushions them. It reduces friction and allows the bones to move smoothly against each other. I can also cut through some of the ligaments here and show you the cartilage. So as you can see, there is smooth, white cartilage at the end of the bone. Now let's take a look at the bone itself. Bone is a very hard tissue made up of a framework of protein and the mineral calcium to keep that framework hard and strong. While it may not look like it, bone is a living, growing connective tissue. It has its own blood vessels and constantly breaks down old tissue and creates new tissue. So now I'm going to crack a bone open. It works easiest with the radius because it's thinner and weaker than the other bones. So now you can see the bone marrow inside the bone. Bone marrow is this spongy red tissue and it produces red blood cells and also some white blood cells. I, that's the end of the chicken wing dissection. Thanks for watching. Here's a fun fact to send you on your way. People that are quote unquote double jointed are able to move their joints beyond a normal range. For example, some people can bend their fingers back very far. There are many possible causes of this, but one possibility is that the person's ligaments may be more elastic than normal allowing them to move their bones farther than the normal range. Thanks for watching! If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more.